Here in chapter number two, we're going to be dividing up the topics into different videos. For example, in this part one video, we're going to be determining or calculating the tax based upon the taxable income amount that we had learned back in chapter number one. And then we're going to have other videos for different types of tax credits. And eventually we'll learn how to pay the tax and then file the return here in chapter two. You can download this PowerPoint file by going to our Laulima site and in the chapter resources folder for chapter number two, you'll find the link to uh, download the PowerPoint. And of course, you're going to be watching this chapter two videos and then reading the chapter. Let's first review what we had covered back in chapter number one. If you remember, we started off with a simple tax formula called... Uh, revenue here at the top or the different ways of making money yeah? so-called income and the one type we learned in chapter one was the wages or salaries we saw that were reported on a w-2 form and eventually in chapter three we'll learn about other types of income we have to report then we learn to subtract out expenses or the tax term is called deductions and the one deduction we learned about in chapter one was called the standard deduction. And the standard deduction amount may vary depending upon the taxpayer's filing status, maybe age or possibly blindness, and if they're also being claimed as a dependent on another taxpayer's return. When we subtract out the deductions from the revenue, we get a specific line item on the tax form called the taxable income. So this is the amount for the whole year we're going to use to calculate out the taxpayer's tax. And the concept is we're going to be multiplying that taxable income by some type of tax rate or um, multiple rates to get the total tax for the year. The term is called tax tax liability okay and then well let's take a look at the, the form again yeah that's the 1040 form so if you're at our laulima site here off to the left side are different tools including this one called tax forms and you'll see two columns for the year 2018 and 19. Of course, we want the latest year 2019. And you can click on this link to pull down the 1040 form and the instructions. If you don't see the form you want, you can always go to the IRS site and search for the form you want, or here the Hawaii site to get Hawaii tax forms. I've already downloaded the form. Let me um, open up the form here, but it's gonna show up in my browser you can see here as one of the tabs in my browser. Now make sure you don't fill in the form when it's in the browser, but you gotta download it and reopen it up in the Acrobat program. Yeah? So here is my 1040 form in the Acrobat program. So we already learned the wage income here in line number one of the 1040 form. And again, the only deduction we learned about is the standard deduction here in line nine. And when we subtract it out, we get the taxable income amount in line 11B. Now, when you look at the next page, the backside of the 1040 form, the first thing it's asking for is the tax or the tax liability for the whole year. So to figure out this tax amount, we again work with the taxable income in line 11B and if it's under $100,000, we have to use what we call the tax tables here in the instructions for the 1040. You can probably use the index here or the table of contents with links here to get to the tax table. But here, let's just scroll through the, through the instructions. And it's gonna be just pages of numbers, your tax table. But you don't confuse it with this bunch of numbers here. You see these numbers? This is not the tax table. 
It's the so-called earned income credit table. Earned income credit, which we'll learn about in another video here for chapter number two. But here, further down, is the tax tables grouped in increments of $1,000. So here is the beginning. Looks like it's on uh, page 62. And again, in increments of 1000 So let's say our taxable income back in line 11B is $50,000. So you jump to the $50,000 bunch, but it's going to appear twice in the tables. So you got to be careful to make sure you know which so-called row in the tax table to use. You see this row right here? Sorry, this row right here, see the 50,000? It also appears at the beginning of the next row, this 50,000. So it's best to take a look at the top of the columns where it says at least this amount in the first column, but less than this amount in the second column. So 50,000 is not less than 50,000. So you don't use this first 50,000. But 50,000 is at least 50,000. So we use this second row here with the 50,000. So this identifies the row we're going to be using in the tax table. The next step is to pick the column off to the right side for the filing status. So again, you take a look at the top of the columns here. And if you remember back in chapter one, we learned about five different filing statuses, but there's only four columns here off to the right side. Do you know which one is missing? If you remember back in chapter 1, the married filing joint and the qualifying widow or widower share the same standard deduction and also share the same tax rates built into this tax table. So if you look at this asterisk, the footnote at the bottom of of each page, it tells you that's going to be using the same as the qualifying widow and married filing separate. So if our taxpayer that had at least 50000 but less than $50,050 $50 of taxable income, again coming from that line 11B, and they had a filing status of being single, here's a single filing status column, their total tax liability for the year is this $6,864. This is the amount that would go back here on page 2 of the 1040 in line 11A. Yeah, the tax or the tax liability for the whole year. You would add it to some other taxes that we're going to learn later, possibly also here in schedule number 2 and then combine it here in line 12. Again, the tax liability for the year. Now, if you look at the tax table and go to the very end, I mentioned that if the taxable income were less than 100,000, you use the tax table because the tax table only goes out to under, under 100,000 here. So if your taxable income is 100000 or over that, you have to use something called the worksheet. So if you scroll further down or look in the instruction book, here on the next page is the worksheets that goes through a comparable calculation that's discussed in Chapter 2. Again, you would identify the filing status of the taxpayer. Yeah, the filing status. The filing status and then you plug in the taxable income uh, you multiply it by a rate and you adjust it downwards to get the tax for the year but the way we learned how to use the so-called tax rate schedule when you cannot use the taxable income because the taxable income is over a hundred thousand let's take a look at the tax uh, tax rate schedule. So this is something like what you see in the inside front cover of your textbook. It's near the very end of the instructions. Looks like on page 104, the tax rate schedule. If you want to use your textbooks, the tax table 
is an appendix letter T, yeah, Thomas. Um, if you want to use your textbook for the tax rate schedule, it's in the inside front cover of the book. So again, we identify the filing status, single, married filing joint or qualifying widow, married filing separate, or head of household. So let's say that we have a taxpayer that's single filing status with a taxable income back in line 11B of $150,000. So we look up the taxable income going down these two columns. $150,000 is over $84,200, but, but uh, not over... Sorry, I cannot highlight here. Not over 160750 So the way we learned in our textbook is to take the excess of the 150 over this amount here, or here at the very end, yeah? Amount over 84200 Let's see if I can bring in my calculator here. That's 150000 and the excess over 84,200. And your answer is 65,800. This 65,800 is going to be taxed at this rate of 24%. So even though our taxpayer falls within this 24% rate, they still get the benefit of 10% taxing their first $9,700. And then the next range or next bracket of about uh, 30000 is going to be taxed at 12%. And the next range of about 45000 is going to be taxed at 22%. And then anything over 84200 that we just had done, the 65800 is going to be taxed at 24%. So let me multiply this 65800 by... 24% or decimal 2.4. So here is the tax, not for the whole year, but only on 65,800. Again, tax at 24%. Now I got to add in the tax with the first row and the second row and the third row. But I don't need to do the math because it's built in to this number right over here. This 14,000. $382.50. So let me add that to my previous number to get the total tax liability for the whole year. There's 30175 rounded up here to the next nearest dollar, yeah? 50 cents and over round up to the next dollar. It's $175. Is what I'm going to put, let's see if I can copy it here, onto my 1040 form here in line 12A. Let me round it up again to uh, the nearest dollar. And then again, if I don't have anything on this schedule number two, I just repeat it again in line 12B. Again, this is called the tax liability for the whole year. And in other videos for Chapter 2, we're going to be reducing this for tax credits, yeah, possibly increasing it for other taxes we have to report on our tax return, and eventually reducing it by any taxes we've already paid through withholdings or through something called estimated taxes. Okay, so in this video, we took the taxable income here in line 11B, and either use the tax table, if it tax income is under 100000 or the tax rate schedule to figure out this tax liability in line 12A for the whole year. Okay, continue looking at the, the other videos here for chapter number two.